Hello, welcome pen friends. It's been quite a while since I've done an actual fountain pen review, but that's what I'm planning to do today. Uh, this is the Ferris Wheel Press brush fountain pen, and the color is Spring Violet. So I thought we'd do a, a review of it, um, starting with looking at the pen and the packaging, and then I'll do some comparisons to other fountain pens that I have a writing sample and then I'll tell you you know what I think are the pros and cons and uh, I'll tell you the story about how I accidentally ended up getting this pen so let's get started first let's look at the box um, Ferris Wheel Press is a company in Canada and they're well known for their beautiful packaging and uh, this is the the box is gorgeous I mean it's a slip case box with a lot of embossing and real prettiness on it and then inside the pen was actually in a little sleeve with a little maple leaf. <laughs> it was just tucked in there like that. So it is, it's really nice. It's gift worthy for sure. So there's that. I really like how they did that. <clears throat> so let's just look at the pen, look it all over. I'm a little rusty. Whoops, <laughs> I got it in that little velvet pouch and got, got it dirty, but. Um, the pen is actually made of copper, brass, and stainless steel. And it's, it's naturally ends up having its own roll stop with that little nut in the middle. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and look at it. It has a stainless steel number five nib. And mine is a fine. It took me a little while to find that on the section, but whoops. Oh, I'm hoping that'll focus. Right there, it says F for fine. It comes in a fine or a medium. And let's look at the section as close as we can. It's pretty ordinary, the section and the nib. But it does have, the nib is neat because it has their Ferris wheel press on it. It's going to be hard with my equipment to show you that. But it has etching on the little brass section, which I think is really pretty. Um, I understand from reading on their website that the reason it's called the brush fountain pen is because it's kind of shaped like a, a paintbrush and it even has the section that kind of reminds us of that and it has the rounded end so let's make a little closer look at the cap it's got that beautiful uh, brass shiny right now anyway uh, middle section on the cap what am i trying to say <laughs> And it's weighty, um, but not too weighty. The, the whole pen, I think, weighs 23 grams. So that was, that's pretty neat. It's, it's not super heavy, but yet it has a nice substantial feel to it. The section is pretty narrow. I just measured it at, uh, well, right where I grab it, right about there, it's 8 millimeters, approximately, give or take a little bit. So, um, so far, I haven't had any trouble in my journal um, writing with it, I haven't felt like it was uncomfortable, which surprises me because that's a narrow section. But um, I can also choke back on it and get it by the, uh, what do you call those? <laughs> oh gosh, threads if I want to and right there, but I'm more comfortable on the actual section. I've been writing with it for a couple of weeks now. So let's see. Just kind of look it over here. Oh, it's been so long since I've done a pen review. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm just going to try to cover everything. It may be a little, <laughs> a little odd. Okay, so I think next. Well, no, not next. We got to look at the the filling mechanism. It comes with a converter, so it's a cartridge converter. That's nice. And my understanding is that it, it's a standard international size. So one of the things I want to try, which I haven't tried yet, is to use uh, a standard international cartridge. But with all the ink I have floating around, I, I probably, I'm better off just filling the converter anyway, in my, my own case. So lengthwise, it's 143 millimeters when it's capped. Um, and the converter has a 0.75 milliliter capacity for ink, but I'll put all of that uh, detail stuff in the description box because that's kind of boring to be trying to put here. So number five nib. Let's compare it to some other fountain pens. I think that's going to be interesting. I've got a handful here. <clears throat> okay. <coughs> okay. 
Okay, the first pen that I thought of that I wanted to compare it with was the Genhao X750 because that's a metal pen. It's in a different price range and it certainly doesn't have the unique features of the Ferris Wheel Press brush pen, but it is a, a favorite of mine that I end up outfitting for a pretty reasonable price, even with a new nib. Um, and then next, of course, a Lamy Safari. Just for, I think, size comparison, it's worthy. And then this is the Genhao 301, which is a metal pen with a, a uh, narrow section. So it made me think of that, but there's something about this pen that isn't quite as comfortable to write with as the Ferris Wheel Press one. But it did, these are the ones that I went looking for in my pen case. Now, the reason this is out, this is the, uh, the Pilot Vanishing Point. And so it's really hard to compare the two, except that this does have a cartridge converter, but it has a gold nib. And it's about within $20 of the price of the Ferris Wheel Press pen. So I did get it out, just to be fair, um, or unfair, or however the case may be. Um, here is an old Schaefer, and oh, I should know what it is, because I've got it written down somewhere, and I certainly have it inventoried. But it made me think of this just because it's... it's it's narrow and it's got uh, actually this one has a it's not inked up it has a cartridge an empty cartridge in it okay so for what it's worth there's the comparisons and let's uncap at least this one uh, and this one so we can look at them together it's much narrower narrower of a section <clears throat> and the materials are just much more superior on the ferris wheel press pen but there is a big difference in price too uh, but we're not going to talk about price just yet. And of course, this just comes with a, a standard uh, number six nib. So that's a different size nib with a similar feed. Okay, there we go. And then it's hard to compare the Lamy being that it's plastic and it's, it's a totally different ball game. But at least you can see the sizes. And I, I think that's important sometimes. Um, if you're really happy with a narrow section like that, <clears throat> and if you're looking for a slim pen, then that's something to, to really be aware of. i got to get that cap, though, because it is inked, and I don't want it to dry. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So, hopefully, if there's anything I've forgotten, I can get it all in the description for you, because it's been a hot minute since I did a review of any kind. Okay. So... Next, let's do a writing sample, and then we'll talk about price and pros and cons from my opinion only. <laughs> That's all I can really give you, okay? And the story, of course, but first let's do a writing sample. This is the Vaughn Travel Gear uh, A5 hardcover with 68 GSM Tomoy River paper. And of course, this page had a little bit of bleed back through, so I, it'll be perfect for just testing this pen some more. I have written with it a lot in my journal, but let's see. Let me get that a little closer for you. Okay, so we've got the Ferris wheel. Press. I do seem to be choking back on that a little bit. Brush pen. With a fine nib. And, and the ink I have in it is... Roar and Clinger. I have a hard time talking and writing. <clears throat> Casia. I love this ink for testing pens because I've worked with the ink so long. I know how it uh, behaves. And it is a really good flowing ink. So it helps me rule out issues. Like um, if I'm using a drier ink or an ink that, that I'm not sure of, and I have problems with the pen, then I may not, uh, I may automatically suspect the pen, but it could be the ink, so. This is super smooth, <clears throat> and I only cheated just a little bit. Since it is a fine nib, and when I got it, it had just a little more feedback. I don't like feedback at all, and it didn't have much, but it had enough that I got out my micro mesh, and I just did a little bit of tuning, to get it just exactly where I wanted it. So um, it's there now. It's exactly where I want it. And it's really nice uh, because it doesn't bleed through 
my notebooks that I'm using and it fits in my in fact that's one of the things I like about it <clears throat> fits in my knock seed let me just show you that <clears throat> it just fits right in here with a pencil so I've got my gray pen whoops you can barely see it because I haven't <laughs> I haven't gone back to normal here uh, so I keep a little pencil and I've shown this on another video, but not everybody's going to have seen that and I, I kind of like that See the Twisby goes ahead and takes up all the real estate in the pen holder in the knock seed But the fierce will press one can easily share with a little slim pencil So I'm good to go with an entire setup here and I, I, I do like that a lot I just thought I'd show you <clears throat> Okay, so now, now we have to talk about price in a way because you can't talk about really, I, I can't talk about pens without talking about price. But let's, let me tell you how I came to have this pen. I got a generous gift certificate from a family member before my December birthday and I placed the order. Um, I didn't order a pen. I, I ordered uh, some inks, some uh, washi tapes, that finishing tape they call it and some stationery, you know, some things like that. And when I opened my box, I like, uh, this pen was in here with my inks and my washi tape and my stationery wasn't there. And I thought, oh, 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 what has happened? So right away I checked to make sure <laughs> that everything was right. I think I had only had to pay a dollar because I had the gift certificate, but everything checked out like I wasn't charged for the pen. So I wrote an email right away to my contact at Ferris Wheel Press thinking, you think maybe they sent it to me you know like because they send me ink and they've been so generous with ink but no she wrote back and said no that was an error at a new distributor and they would right away get my stationery in my uh, note cards out to me but and that I could keep the pen that was all all in that conversation and I wrote back and said oh you don't need to do that I mean if you're if I'm keeping the pen then you know, please don't, I mean, I didn't want them to have a loss, any more of a loss, but they sent them anyway. I got my stationery a week and a half later, you know, it was the Christmas crush for packaging, but I got my order right away. Like it came within a week and it came before my birthday, which was so much fun. So that's how I came to have the pen. And you need to know that because I had been looking at this pen. I wanted one really badly, but I couldn't really afford it. And I just kept thinking, well, um, you know, I asked some friends, I, I watched some reviews, um, especially in particular Aziza's review was wonderful at uh, Gourmet Pens, I'm sorry. And so I kept thinking about it, but I, and I kept wanting one and I thought, why? Why do I want one? I have other writing experiences that are just as good and, you know, what's going on. But it's just so unique and it's part of their line and I really like their inks. I love their inks and I love the way they they do this, um, their packaging and their presentation and their care for the stationery. So um, I think what I wrote down was that retail is 138, but I have seen it cheaper. I've seen it 124 something and different places have different prices and even they had some deals going on. So you need to look into it if you're interested. But that puts this pen in a, in a bracket that is above what I can afford or really want to pay for a pen so I get to thinking well how am I going to evaluate like whether I would buy this pen now that I've written with it and experienced it and the truth is I really wanted to to keep it even before I inked it up because once I started looking at it and looking at the details on the section and the whole nine yards but I kept you know I waited I had to wait a couple of days I think it was for her uh, email back and I certainly didn't want to mess it up I thought they'd probably give me a label and I could return it um, and but my husband told me don't worry if you fall in love with the pen you can keep it I'll, I'll pay for it but then I thought well I can't ink it up and and then return it so so I didn't I waited I waited <laughs> So let's just you needed to know that because that's going to influence my opinion. Okay, so I'm going to go through the pros and the cons. The, to me, the number one pro is it's so unique. It's different than any any other pen that I have. It it's there's nothing else. I don't know where else you'd get one just like this. I love the fact that it it doesn't roll around. Um, this is a kind of a spongy background here, just to keep. Uh, focus on the color and things like that 
uh, so it's beautiful and it's unique. It comes in several colors, so I'll link you right to where they have them. And then there's all these details, including that brass nut, which I just really love brass. And it has such a, a quality feel to it. If I could get focus, it would just be lovely, but things are not... Hmm, things cooperate when they want to, I guess. Then the section is really pretty. It's just elegant. You know, and I, in fact, I don't normally go for stuff like that, but when I saw how compatible it was with my A5 seed, I just felt like I had to have it. You know, I had to keep it. It was like, oh, mercy, what have I got? How did I get into this? Okay, so we talked about it being unique, beautiful, and it has details. Okay, I love a cartridge converter pen because it's easy to clean and maintain. It's simple. It's quick and easy. And I've already cleaned this out once. I had uh, Straits Pen Honest Ink uh, Bougainvillea Purple in it. And now I have the Roar and Cling Arcasia, and it was super easy to clean, of course. Um, and then the fact, I listed as a, a pro, the fact that it fits in many pen slots, like it, it does, didn't make a big lump or a big fuss in that, uh, along with a pencil. And then, I, I don't know why I jotted this down, bonded with the pen, yeah. I bonded with the pen before I put ink in it, which surprised me, because I had talked myself out of purchasing this pen. Um, it's, you know, it's more than the channel earns in a month to buy one. It's like double, almost double what the channel earns in a month. So, um, that, there's that. Okay, so then over on the con side, I didn't have a lot, but what I had, you know, really the price uh, is the only really big con for me. I mean, I wasn't going to purchase one. Um, Having it in your hands is kind of like going to a pen show, I guess, and being able to try one and saying, oh, this is better than I thought it would be. You know, like having it show up that way was an uh, anomaly and allowed me to see it and feel it. And that's the reason I'm doing this review. I, you know, there's really good reviews out there, but I wanted you to have a perspective from someone who is coming from a lower pen budget. And then um, the other con is the section is narrow. So... As I, as the honeymoon period wears off, I'm not sure how I'm going to feel about that. But so far, uh, writing in this notebook, which is that Flight Diary of Love, it's got really nice paper in it, and I use it about half and half. I write with the gray, and then I, I write, you know, to highlight and to make it stand out. I'm using the purple ink from this pen when I'm journaling every day, and I haven't noticed any discomfort whatsoever which surprises me it's narrow but anyway those were my two cons so the question is you know if they had said you know generated a label and said return it and I and, and I had another option of purchasing it um, at this point I would say I would have let let manual help me purchase it that's how much I like it and to be having it find its way into a, a notebook uh, you know, in, into my, my daily setup for my personal journaling, not my bullet journal, but my personal journaling, that tells me a lot. So I really do like it. I, I can't, <laughs> you know, I can't make this up. I really like it. And I want you guys to know about it. And um, I wonder too about the medium nib one. This is a fine nib, but it's kind of neat because, uh, being able to go in and out of the Loistrum, too, with it is really, really going to be nice. Uh, where sometimes with some medium nibs, that doesn't work. It, but it's, it depends on the ink, too. So I think that's all I have. But I have this sneaking feeling like I'm forgetting half what I should say in a pen review. But almost 20 minutes, it's got to be most of what you'll need. So I will try to put all of the measurements that I could find by measuring and by looking into things for you in the uh, comment section or description box, I guess is what it's called. And I hope that you'll let me know if you have one of these and you, you like it and, and we'll go from there. And let me know if you like to have pen reviews from me, even though there are already, I don't know how many there are out there, but there are quite a few out there on this pen. Um, and I still wanted to do it because of the unique way that it fell into my pen case, so to speak. <laughs> okay, that's enough. You've heard enough of me blabbering. Bye for now. Take care. Happy New Year.